Thanks be to you, O God, that we have risen this day. To the rising of this life itself. Be the purpose of God between us and each purpose. The hand of God between us and each hand. The pain of Christ between us and each pain. The love of Christ between us and each love. O God, who brought us to the bright light of this new day, bring us to the guiding light of eternity. We gather in God's name. We claim Christ's promised presence. Let us pray. Christ as a light illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me, on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for the Word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. Our hearts and minds are open. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother's son Lot, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Morai. At that time the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages towards the Negeb. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. It is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with the harp. 
Play to him upon the psaltery and the lyre. Sing for him a new song. Sound the fanfare with all your skill upon the trumpet. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are sure. He loves righteousness and justice. The loving kindness of the Lord fills the whole earth. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. By the breath of his mouth, all the heavenly hosts. He gathers up the waters of the ocean as in a water skin and stores up the depths of the sea. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all who dwell in the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came to pass. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the will of the nations to naught. He thwarts the designs of the peoples. But the Lord's will stands fast forever, and the designs of his heart from age to age. Happy is a nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people he has chosen to be his own. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that did not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No, distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness." Now the words that was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. 
And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who'd been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Last summer, I traveled by myself to Scotland. I'd never been out of the country, so this was my first overseas trip. I went by myself, and for two weeks, I learned to navigate planes and airports, buses and bus stations, trains and train stations across Scotland and London. I was supposed to go to Ireland for an eight-day retreat as well, but I contracted COVID and had to spend five extra days in a hotel in Glasgow. And then I had to figure out what to do for almost a week until I was to meet my husband in Paris. So I decided to travel from Glasgow north and west to the island of Iona. Iona is one of those mystical, thin places that Christians speak of. A thin place is where God can be felt more readily than other places. Iona is a small island off the west coast of Scotland. To get to Iona from Glasgow, one has to take a four-hour train ride from Glasgow to Oban. The train travels through some of the most beautiful land one can imagine, and Oban is home to a famous whiskey brewery, that is if you like peat-smoked whiskey. From Oban, one takes a 45-minute ferry across the Inlet Sea to the Isle of Mull and then an hour-long bus ride across the south end of the Isle of Mall. And again, it's a stunning bus ride through absolutely gorgeous land. At the west end of the Isle of Mall, one takes a second ferry, a short 10-minute ride across the water to Iona. Iona was settled by St. Columba in the 6th century. Columba traveled from the north of Ireland to Iona in a small canoe which they call a curric, a canoe that's covered, that was like this leather covered wood contraption with 12 other monks. On Iona, he established a monastery and supported Christianity as it developed through Ireland and Scotland. He and other Celtic saints, including the, the well-known saints like Patrick, Bridget, and Margaret, incorporated the indigenous Celtic spirituality and its deep connection to the wilderness of the land, the beautiful wilderness of the land, with Christian belief and practices. And so like Columba, God called Abram to leave his homeland and travel to a new land, establishing a people of God in that land. And Jesus called his disciples out of their homeland and work as fishermen to travel with him across the land, sharing the good news and inviting people to follow God through the teachings of Jesus. Four primary communities rose up from the travels of Jesus and his disciples, and we know them as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And St. Paul was called out of his previous life, a life where he was named Saul and persecuted Christians into the life of a Christian. Paul traveled across the land from Italy to Greece to Turkey, or what's now Italy, Greece, and Turkey, assisting the establishment of churches in Rome, Ephesus, Colossae, Galatia, these are all parts of Turkey, to Corinth, which is in South Central Greece, and Philippi, a Greek city near the Aegean Sea. Each of Paul's letters were written to different churches in different communities, each facing different issues and concerns about how to live in community as faithful Christians. Generally speaking, each church was trying to figure out who they were and what their purpose was, who belonged, and how to belong. 
And Paul teaches them that everyone belongs and all one needs to belong is to love. Calling us out into unexpected places, God anticipates that life will be challenging and that people will have to take risks to live life well and share the good news of God's love in the world. God expects people to go out into the world where love becomes a verb, an action of calling for all people, helping the world to be transformed. But God does not set us out alone. God goes with us. God was with Abram and Sarai, who become Abraham and Sarah, with Saul, who becomes Paul, with Jesus and the disciples, and with Columba, and God is with us too. In this community, this St. Michael's community, this congregation has been an important anchor in Coolidge for a long time. My sense is that this congregation has provided a ministry of hospitality rooted in its history as a famous inn and then evolving into a church, a congregation, with a chapel that for a time was open for anyone to come to rest and pray. And unfortunately, that, that chapel then became old and we had to take it down. But there are other ways in which we'll bring hospitality in the world, including the thrift store where we meet people wherever they are and help them with things they need to sustain their lives, from clothing to home goods to more. There are ways we can and will explore this ministry of hospitality and see how God is calling St. Michael's into the future because it's anticipated that Coolidge will soon experience unprecedented change. Land will be sold, more land will be sold, it may become less of a farming community and perhaps more of a center for technology with young families and more houses and more shopping centers and all those things that come with, with establishing a larger community. The landscape of the land will change and so will the people who live here and the needs of this community will change. Yet a hospitality, a ministry of hospitality will always be needed. How St. Michael's lives into the future God is calling us into is the discernment and the root of our prayers and the work we'll be doing and the ways we'll be practicing putting love into action. And so in a couple of weeks, we're going to begin our study on Celtic spirituality and the writings of John O'Donohue, a well-known poet, theologian, and priest. As I said, Celtic spirituality was at the heart of the missionary work of St. Columba as he helped to spread Christianity through Ireland and Scotland and as he established the monastery in Iona. And Iona itself was a lasting legacy of the depth and richness of Celtic spirituality and the work and ministry of St. Columba and how it's embraced the teachings of Jesus and the call of God to love all people and to be agents of God's healing love in the world today. Pilgrimages to Iona are well loved by Christians all around the world and maybe one day we'll take a pilgrimage to Iona. It would be a fun way for us to explore how love in the world has taken action in that area. And so we'll reflect on Celtic spirituality and we'll begin to see ways that it connects to our lives and encourages us to embrace the ways that God blesses us and then sends us out into the world like Abram, Paul, Columba, Jesus the disciples out into unfamiliar places to be agents of God's healing love in a broken world. Let us say together this affirmation of our faith. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female, and the beautiful diverse variables between and within. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. As a man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth, to the place of death, on the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be present everywhere, and God's kingdom will come to earth. 
we believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecost fire, life-giving breath of the church, source of resurrection and eternal life. Amen. Spirit of fire, inflame in us a passion for justice and equality. That we may know the cleansing of our prejudice and fears and proclaim your freedom boldly, caressing your earth with humility. Spirit of compassion, infuse us with your longings for wholeness and happiness. That we may reach out to those who are hurting and disordered enfolding on another with your love and tenderness. Spirit of wisdom, be within us in our journeying. Gently guide us along right paths. That we may be led towards transformation and the new beginnings in our world. Spirit of gentleness, touch us anew releasing in us all that we are afraid of. That we may know your acceptance of us and freely accept and embrace others. Spirit of power, we pray especially for those who are sick and suffering. Please add your own petitions. Hold us in our powerlessness. that we may know your strength and become a voice for the voiceless, healing for the wounded and empowerment for the weak. Spirit of judgment, be tender with us and show us your mercy. That we may humbly re learn of you and not be afraid of your prophets in the world. Spirit of comfort, Draw near to us in grief and confusion and pain, especially for these who have died. Please offer up prayers for your family and friends. In your graciousness, bring hope, consolation, and renewal. That many may look and discover you in their midst. Spirit of dance, be our playfulness that we may leap and laugh and enter your joy. Give us confidence in life and assurance in death. May the Spirit of God heal our bodies and make them places of communion. May the breath of God heal our hearts and set them on fire for justice. May the Spirit of God heal our nation and the world. Amen. The Gospels tell us over and over again of the joy which comes to us through Christ. When Jesus was around, lives were changed, the sick were healed, the sorrowful began to laugh. The good news is that this joy is now given to us, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. Through the Holy Spirit, we are gifted with joy. We are sent forth to bring good news to the oppressed, to bring healing to the broken, to anoint everyone with the oil of gladness. Let's confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also is you take eat this is my body by paul simmons <laughs> Take it, this is my body.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. In union, O God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ go with you wherever Christ may send you. May this divine one guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May this holy one enliven you with all that you've been shown. May this gracious one bring you home, rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of God, the Creator, Jesus who redeems us, and the Holy Spirit who sanctifies us. Amen. Let us go into the world rejoicing. It is Christ who goes before us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.